us make a leap of logic here to accept the scripture, it's very simple. Brother, don't try and make it sound like it's so logical because 2,000 years ago some apostle said that Jesus rose, that you believe it. That's not so logical. Experience. No, I've used three strands of argument, you've not been paying attention. I use philosophical, empirical and revelation. Even if I showed you a mathematical equation that said Jesus Christ didn't exist, God doesn't exist, you would probably say, you know what, I don't believe that, right I'm now. going with the Bible. Just... Where in my New Testament can any of you show me a law that says we should make the Muslims feel subdued or the non-believers feel subdued? No, I condemn that. You right, so you're that condemning person. Islam? kind of humanitarian unity. It doesn't. And neither does Islam. Neither of these two religions teach that. I don't know. If, if we talk, I'm just going by a few well-known quotes here, but love thy, love thy neighbor sounds pretty unitarian. Uh, uh, right? Love thy neighbor as you love thy, your, yourself, definitely. Yeah. But what's the commandment that comes before that? Enlightenment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Yeah. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength, you can't give acquiescence to ideologies that are against that. Yeah, I understand that, but I don't, I don't necessarily believe that Islam is inherently any, any more of a threat to, to freedom or justice than Christianity is. Well, well, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Christianity teaches that we're all made in the image of God. So you have a dignity that is irrelevant to any other circumstance. It's irrelevant to your religion, your ethnicity, your age, anything. It's because you're made in the image of God. Islam teaches that as a Christian, my life is worth half that of a Muslim man. Does it? Yes, it does. Did you know that? No, I don't know that. Yeah, I can give you the quote. I'm, I'm not a religious scholar so, by any means. So now so let me let me let me, let me ask you. Which of these two ideologies, which of these two religions? Could you give me the quote? Yes, I will. Fine. That's fine. At least I'd like to assess it for myself. Sure. But then when I've given it to you. I, know, I, know that, I don't know if you're gonna bring up like the, the laws of apostasy and if, if someone leaves the religion. Oh well that's that's another point, but that's not the point I'm raising right now. Like I said, I'm here to learn. I just come to have nice discussions with people, be they Muslims or Christians. I'm not religious myself, but, but that's, that's the essence of um, Speaker's Corner, in my opinion. And I feel that this right. partisanism between Muslims and Christians... Let, let me ask you this question, right? This is what Islamic sources teach, okay? Um, one second, let me just make sure I get the right, the right bit. Okay. No, no, let me get the right bit. Here we go. Le the legal regulations of the dia, which the dia is the, 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 the paying of blood money. So, say I kill you. I, I, I can pay blood money to your family as compensation. But this was a... This was a Are you going to listen? I am. You asked can for the reference. Are you actually going to listen to the reference? Go ahead. So I'm just explaining what the term means. The legal regulations of the dia and the releasing of the captives and the judgment that no Muslim should be killed in Kisas for the killing of a kuffar. So, so if a, a, a Christian kills a Muslim under Sharia law, that Christian's life can be forfeit unless the family want to accept blood money. But if a Muslim kills a Christian, the Muslim's life can't be made forfeit. So there's no equality in parity of law there. Here's what he says about the blood money. Now, this, now we've talked about the value of life, now let's talk about the blood money. Let's just, that's Sahih al No, you're not even listening. No, bro, bro, you're grasping at straws. You're trying to rationalize. This isn't about wars. This is not about wars. Take this on board. We're not talking, yes, you did. We're not talking about wars. We're talking about what is the legal status. What is the legal status of Christians under Islam? Listen to what it says, Abu Dawood. The value of the blood money at the time of the Apostle of Allah was 800 dinars or 8,000 dirhams. And the blood money for the people of the book was half that of the Muslims. Now tell me. There's an inequality there. Do you want to live under that inequality? No, I don't. So do you think that it is right to oppose that inequality? Listen, here's, here's my point. I'm not here to get into a scriptural... I would really like you to answer my question. Would, do you think it is right to oppose that kind of inequality? Yes. Right. Then you, Can if I you... Can make my point now? Okay, I'll yes, go question. Yes. So my point is this. Can I ask you a question? Actually? Yeah, go on. Just a brief question requires a brief answer. Do you think that there are commonalities between Islam and Christianity? However small they may be. Yes. There are, right? And there are obviously some differences, right? That outweigh the similarities. You think so? Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I, I believe that 
if I, I don't know if, if these if these things you're quoting come directly from the Quran or if they're from from extra sources from scholars or from hadiths or whatever but I think that if we take the book and the book I can't give you any scriptural examples like I said I'm not a scholar but I think that I could I could post to you several verses in the Bible that probably represent a situation of inequality like that as well I can't I can't bring any off the top of my head so this is a bit of a weak argument right now it is but um, I, I don't know like for example I, I don't know the context of it, but apparently in the Bible, Jesus said that the Jews are the children of the devil. Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't talk about that in the Bible. It doesn't. No, I'm doesn't. mistaken. Like no. mistaken. It talk. It talk. I think it talks. I think the, the strongest statement in the New Testament is about the synagogue of Satan. So my point to you is, building on what you said previously, you said that it is right to oppose this kind of inequality. Right. If it is right to oppose this idea of inequality and we have identified that Islam is the source, is it therefore right to oppose Islam? I, I didn't identify that Islam was its source. I, don't I, think, I, I, I think showed it to you. No, no, here. You, you showed me that. That's your Bukhari note. Bukhari 98. I accepted it. I said that if, that if it's so, I oppose that. But what I'm saying is that why don't we focus on unity between people? At the end of the day, the ultimate goal of the, wor the Islamic worshipper and the Christian worshipper is the same, is to get closer to God. No, it isn't. You don't think so? No. no. Why not? Because the, 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 the Islamic agenda, for those Muslims who genuinely follow Islam, yeah, for those Muslims that genuinely follow Islam, are, are, is that Islam should dominate. Yeah. That Sharia should be but around the world. Christian evangelism as well, right? But we don't, we, we don't, bro, well. we don't have, we want everyone to become a Christian, that's absolutely true. I want you to be a Christian, I want this Muslim brother to be a Christian, I want this Muslim brother to be a Christian. But what I don't want, that I don't have, is a Christian set of religious laws to impose upon them. Because we Christians structure the idea of the state and the idea of the institutional church as two separate things. Yeah, that's a recent that's, thing that's though, not, isn't that's it? That's not a Christian, actually it's not, it comes from the Byzantine Empire. Do you know the Byzantine Empire? I do know the Byzantine yeah. Empire. The Byzantine yeah. Empire, church and state were formally separate. Yeah, that's, that's why the true. eagle has two heads. So it's not yeah. Christian. That's fair enough. But no, it is Christian. But if you go to so the Roman it, so Empire, the Catholic Church so why was, was, the was very powerful, the wasn't it? The it was very powerful, but there was always a pope and there were always kings. Even in the Byzantine Empire, the Church Bro, had a there was, there was, affairs, there was always popes and there were always kings. But the thing is, Christianity can survive without political power. We did for the first 300 years of our faith. Well, we didn't have any political power until we, something like the Emperor Theodosius. Fair enough. Or, me, or no, actually, the first time we had political power was in which country? Armenia. Armenia. Yeah. Fair enough. But, um, sorry, let me and what year was that? Three, I don't know, probably about 280, 200. something like that. So, so for the first 280 years, until Armenia converted, we had no political power. Yeah, but if we look at the origins of both religions, we can see that Christianity was started by an oppressed people in a, in a hegemonic um, imperial society, yeah. similar to Islam. So we can see that they're both fostered in similar conditions. So we could logically say, if we... If we step backwards from the assumption that the, that the scriptures are actually true, and we make the assumption that they're written by human beings with no, con no divine connection, if we make that assumption and we just look from a historical perspective, we can say that, okay, they're both um, fostered in environments where you have a hegemonic power and you have an oppressed people trying to, to remove the shackles of oppression. And I think that if we look at the religions as a vehicle for these people to attain that freedom from, from the oppression that they were under, we can see that there's not much difference. Between so let me, let me reply that. Let me reply to that. Because what you're doing is you're trying to, you're using this prism that religions are about uh, uh, um, uh, securing freedom. But what you're doing is you're reinterpreting Christianity. I'm oh, one second, I didn't interrupt I'm you. Just, just I did not interrupt you, don't interrupt me. Like you have answer. just said that religions are about, um, you know, uh, vehicles by which people who are powerless can gain their freedom from oppression. But that is reinterpreting Islam and Christianity in a way that is not authentic to what Islam teaches or to what Christianity teaches. Islam, Islam teaches, Islam teaches that I as a Christian should be a dhimmi. That means a second class citizen. It says I should feel myself subdued. Tell me, would you like to feel yourself subdued? Of course not. Right, so if we are agreed that it is wrong to treat people like that, then that means Islam is wrong to teach that. 
which means that it is right to oppose Islam for teaching that. So I'll ask you again. Can I? I'll ask you again, because I'll show you the verse. I'll show you the verse so that you don't think I'm making it up. No problem, no problem. We can go on, on the assumption that you're correct. Okay. Anyway. So, okay, so if we are going on the assumption that that is exactly what the Quran says, then does that mean that you should oppose Islam for teaching something you're against? Um, yes, of course it does. There you go. But at the end of the day, if we go back to the prism of, of socio-politics that I was talking about, we can see why those clauses are written into the documents. Because they inherently need to grow to gain political power, right? So of course they would have a, a clause in the document that says, okay, um, if, you, if you leave, you're, you're murdered, you're killed by law, and if you're, if you're not part of the, the brotherhood, then you're a second-class citizen. It makes sense. In the same way that Christians say that if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, that hellfire awaits you. Yeah, hellfire. One second. Hellfire. It's just Where in my New Testament can any of you show me a law that says we should make the Muslims feel subdued or the non-believers feel subdued? No, I condemn that. You right, so you're condemning person. Islam? I can, Great. I, listen, I condemn all organized religion. That's my stance. No, no, hold on. Hold on. Make any One second. Well, on what grounds, on what grounds, on what grounds, right? If, we, if we're accept, because saying that people are going into judgment and, and risk hellfire for not believing means that you've condemned Islam twice. You've condemned Islam for teaching that I should be subdued for being a Christian and that's and fair enough, brother. But what you're doing here, brother, is your point scoring. One second, that's, one that's second, bro, enough. bro, one second. You've condemned Islam twice now. That's you've fair. said you've said that you condemn it. Not, one I'm second. Why, why are you interrupting? Did I interrupt you? No. So why are you interrupting me? Well, Let's have a conversation. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's have a conversation. Of course, please. So, in terms of Islam, you've condemned it twice because Islam teaches that I should be subdued for being a Christian, and you condemn that, and that means you're a good person, <laughs> and that means you said you should oppose Islam for doing that, and I honour you for standing up for what's right but then you condemned christianity yes. for saying that those who don't believe in jesus risk hellfire yes muslims say exactly the same that's about those enough. that don't believe in muhammad that's that enough, they brother. risk hellfire so islam doing. is doubly wrong yes fair enough but here's what you're doing you're point scoring against islam it's almost as if you're 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 pigeonholing my perspective as islamic i'm not coming from an islamic i know you're not muslim so if you're if you're if you're point scoring against islam it doesn't bear any weight in this conversation let, the go on i'll let you finish the principle that i was talking about still remains the fact that if we look at these documents from a socio-economic, political, historical context, we can see that they have these clauses written into the documents to gain followers and to prevent followers from leaving. Both have the same, same features when you break it down. All right, maybe Islam has one or two more than Christianity, but fundamentally, you haven't dispelled my point just by saying that Islam has two more than Right, so, so now let me address your point directly, because here's the thing. People like you, and, and I say this not in a pejorative sense, but I say people who have this idea that we should treat all religions as if they teach the same and if they stand for the same things. You are the way that the Islamists gain traction in society because you're frightened to call evil evil. Well, you're frightened to stand up to evil. One second, one second. Because you're saying that Christianity is like Islam and Islam is like Christianity, even though you have no evidence for that claim, because here's your opportunity to produce it, show me in the Bible where it says that I should oppress these two Muslims. Show me in the Bible where it says I should value their lives as being half that of my own. Show me in the Bible where it says I should make these two Muslims feel themselves subdued. That I should wage war against these two Muslims just because they're Muslims. Tell, show me in the Bible. No, 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 One second, no, no. let I me finish. You, I'm not let me finish. Point, so let no me finish. Because you're, you're missing my point then. Let me finish. Show me in the Bible where it says I should impose a tax upon these two Muslims and if they don't pay it, I can enslave their wives and children. I can take their property from them and I can kill them. Show me that in the Bible. You can't. But, but, I can show you in Islam where it teaches that. Now, one second, one second, here's my point. This is the point. If I am demonstrating to you that Islam is so much worse than Christianity, however bad you might think Christianity is, then that means from your perspective, Christianity is the lesser of two evils. Don't do that because I'm not informed on either. All I've got is your word to go by. So not from my perspective, from your perspective. However, what I'm saying is that that we should focus on the commonality of worship, right? 
If you want to worship, GC. if you no, forget about that. You, whatever form GC. you want to worship in, whoever your guru is, whoever your teacher is, whatever your scripture is, you turn the, the, cheek, the essence of it is yeah. to well, love life and to love God. This is the beauty of religion. And here's the problem: is when we take the scripture as a whole to be a factual document these conflicts are going to arise. If you can take a step back and say, we're going to look at these documents for their metaphorical context yep. and for their for their moral values, yep. we would have no issues here. We could all just, we could take what's good and we could reject what's bad. But it only comes when there's these dogmatic views that the whole scripture is factual. And right, so let me reply to that because this is what I accused you of doing earlier. You're essentially saying, let's all unite. But Muslims don't take your Quran seriously and Christians don't take your Bible seriously. Well, that defeats the point of being a Christian or a Muslim. The point of being a Muslim is you follow the example of Muhammad. The point of being a Christian is you follow the example of Jesus. The point of, if you follow the example of Muhammad, you're going to stand for things that are unjust, such as beating women. As we've just seen in the park. I'm Hashim sure, Tash. wait one second, I'm pretty sure there are verses in the Bible about that as well, right? There are, right? Yes, but, but, but here's the thing, and this is the point that everyone who tries to form this kind of equality misses. And you're doing it again, right? According to Muslims, this is the equivalent of their New Testament, right? And Muslims don't have the covenant system that we Christians have. We Christians, and if you don't believe me, go and ask the pit. One, let me. Why do you always interrupt? I'm just saying that. I don't, why do you I always interrupt? Don't need to prove your scriptural point. Wait, 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 wait bro. So listen then. So just listen then. With, if you keep saying I'm going to accept it, listen to the point well, anyway. Check it, I'll do it yeah, go great. <laughs> so you can go and speak to the patriarch of Armenia, and you can ask the patriarch. Number. You can ask the, any bishop of the pa the Armenian Apostolic Church, and you can ask them: Do Christians believe in a covenantal system? And they will say yes. We Christians have a covenantal system that is integral to our faith. So pointing out passages in the Old Testament are Old Covenant. They don't apply in the New Covenant. The kind of passages that you have in the Old Testament do enough, not though. say, one second, enough, they though. don't say what the Quran You're says. No, they don't say what the Quran says. Here's what the Quran says. The Quran says, You're if you, one, what, why, why are you interrupting again? Said, don't cherry pick. Why are you interrupting? Why are you interrupting? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to Why are you interrupting? This is a why are you interrupting? I let you finish. Go ahead, Did please. I interrupt you? No. So why are you interrupting me? Interject if I'm speaking. You are breach of COVID regulations. There's more of a six in you here, and you're not socially distancing. Spread out. If you guys want to watch this on Soko Films, you can, and then we can just. You got to spread out, guys. He's he's just going to kick us out of the park. So so the point is, the Quran says. I'll just stand back from you a bit. The Quran says. If you suspect disobedience on the part of your women, firstly, admonish them, secondly, banish them from your bed, and thirdly, beat them, strike them. That's in the New Testament literature. Do you, do you agree with that? Do you oppose that? Do you oppose a religion that teaches that? So you oppose Islam then, get off the fence. I told you, I made a very clear stance that I don't condemn any dogmatic form of religion. You just contradicted yourself because you just condemn one. No, but I, yeah, I'm saying that I, no, I condemn all dogmatic forms of religion. All dogmatic That's forms of religion. Not specifically Islam, but Christianity. Why, why do you condemn Christianity? Well, like I said, I'm not going to test you on scriptural points. The distance is not being complied with here, the code regulations. Groups of six, no more, no face mask. If this attack carries on, we're going to clear. Corner. Guys, you got you got to watch this on Soko Films. I'm sorry. And you've got to spread out. If you want to talk to me, just hang around until you see that I'm clear and come and chat. Hey, it's all spread out, so, yeah, what I'm essentially saying, my friend, is that there is. I'm sure even you can accept that if we're cherry picking. I'm asking you why you're condemning Christianity. Because, because it, for one. It, it, it um, is inclusivist, just like most other religions. So if you don't believe in the scripture, then you're excluded from salvation. For another, um, it asks you to make many leaps of logic based on a document that's 2,000 years old. So for these two reasons, I don't really feel that there's any more need to give any more reasons. They're, they're, that's sufficient. But um, what I'm saying is that if we're cherry picking, even you, I'm sure, could find some 
moral guidance in the Quran that you could agree with, right? If we're cherry picking. Did so, you, did you want yeah, to I heard what you said, so let me reply. Let me reply. So what I'm saying, let me finish. Go on. So what I'm saying is, if we're cherry picking, and which you are actually doing as well, because you're saying we have a covenantal system and the New Testament is given greater weight than the Old Testament. So if we're quoting Old Testament for violence and such, it, it doesn't hold as much weight as if it says it in the Quran, which is fair. I, I, I grant you that. But if we accept that there, there are these, these discriminatory passages, even in the Old Testament, then we can say we're cherry picking to a degree, even if there is a tiered system. So if we're cherry picking, there is some good moral guidance in Islam that, that we can all agree with, right? So if we're doing that, then why don't we focus on unity? This is what I'm saying to you, brother. So what you're doing, well, I, I, I like you, you're a well-learned gentleman, and for the most part, you conduct yourself politely, but I do feel that you somewhat contribute towards the bipartisan attitude in this park that led to Hatun getting punched today. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, can not, I reply? Not that your points aren't valid, but these are not the things that we should be focusing on. That's what I'm saying. Can I reply? Please. So firstly, the, you, you'll not find any record on a camera of a Christian punching a woman, a Muslim woman in the park. Not one. Not in, not in 30 years of documented preaching can you find any evidence of a, Muslim, of a Christian assaulting a Muslim woman in the park. But Mus a Muslim man knocked unconscious a Christian sister in the park, broke her glasses, she's right there. She's right there. Five foot one. Five foot one she is. She's a fierce little tiger of a woman. Lioness. But, but she is still nonetheless a short woman that just got knocked out by a Muslim guy. And he got punched, knocked out because she's criticizing Islam. And then Muslims, after the assault, turned around and said that assaulting Hatun was okay because she that. had insulted that. the prophet yeah, exactly. and that. then what you did and what you did what was then say that's partly my fault no 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 brother you need to understand that's me. partly my fault no, no, let, me no let me finish my point you, you can respond accusation. no you can respond. respond you can respond that's right, that's right. Okay. i didn't interrupt you you can respond we're not going anywhere unless the police makes us go ahead, go ahead. so here's the problem and here's the problem with anyone who tries to be neutral in this conflict and it is a conflict because the Islamists see it as a conflict and our Lord our Christ said that if you are not for him you are against him if you don't gather in with him you can scatter abroad Christ said that you have to choose him above the world above your mother and father above your brothers and sisters above everyone so being partisan is being Christian we can't pick and choose our religion which is what you're asking me to do and Muslims can't pick and choose their religion. Go and ask them, they'll tell you they can't. Yeah, yeah, so if their religion says... This is because of dogma. If they're, exactly, but we say... But Christians have it as well. So now, so show me the evidence of Christians passing the kind of laws that Islam passes on Muslim, uh, or that Muslims pass on Christians. I can't show you any examples. So stop pretending they're the same. No, no, I didn't say they're the same. I said that I'm grouping them together because as a non-believer, they're, they're both religions. They are in the same umbrella category. Anyway, as for me accusing it being, accusing you of it being your fault that Hatun got punched, that's not what I said. What I'm saying is that there's fault on both sides here. Sure. For the tension What's in the park. What's my fault, sorry? No, no, no. For the tension in the park. What's the fault of the Christians? Let me say this. For the tension in the park between Muslims and Christians, it's a fireplace and both sides have been throwing logs onto it. Sorry, I've, se I, I've seen the Muslims do it and I've seen the Christians how, how many Christians? How many Christians? Listen, brother, I've seen Hatun being very inflammatory. It's true, there's so no deserves, question about this. No, that, it doesn't. It doesn't. That deserves being punched it in the face. It doesn't. No, it does not. And that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that... There it's is, partly her fault. No, what I'm saying is that the tension between Christians and Muslims, both sides are adding to it. What, what you're saying is that Hatun got punched in the face. It culminated in that. A Muslim did it. Did, did, it could have been did a Christian Hatton that did do it. anything. It could have been a Christian. The perpetrator did. is irrelevant. What I'm saying is the root no, cause the here... The perpetrator is not irrelevant. Listen, the root cause here, the root cause here no, is, is that... And we'll do the same thing. The root, yes. So, so the it matters that they're Muslim, yeah? It matters that they're Muslim. It, it, it could have been violent. a Christian. It, it definitely could have been a Christian because that, there is much tension. But it wasn't. It wasn't. But it wasn't. It wasn't. 
But it could have been, and this is my point, is that both sides have added to the tension. Do you not agree with so that? So let me let me reply to that. I, I think that's a fact. Let me statement. let me let me let me ask you this. All that has happened in the park is that Christians have got tired and of let's being. Just say, let me no, let's no. just clap for Hatun because she's back here speaking yeah. already, and that's a brave woman for sure. There we go. This is, this is, Hatun is what we call in Christian circles a confessor of the faith. Now, if you were connected to your Armenian culture and your Armenian heritage, you wouldn't need that explaining to you, you know, what exactly what I mean by confessor of the faith. It's not hard. A she, confessor she of the faith. A confessor of the faith. No, that is not what a confessor is. A confessor of the faith is someone who suffers because they confess the faith. And that's what happens with Hatun. She suffers in this park week in, week out, because she preaches the gospel to Muslims. And she exposes the lies of Islam. And what we find, what we find is that Muslims who are better than their prophet condemn the violence against Hatun. Muslims who are copying their prophet lord and applaud the violence against Hatun. And then the politicians, the ones who follow the kind of liberal ideology, I can't do it with this mask, the, the people that, that, that follow the kind of liberal ideology that you do, okay. that just think we should all get along, yeah. want to whitewash, want to white... with that? Want, want, I will answer that question. I, will, I will along. answer that question. I will answer that question. Whitewash the issues. They try to blur the lines between Christianity and Islam as if Christianity and Islam no, teach the same are, thing no, 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 or no. practice the same there thing. Are lines there, All but that I'm has happened in them. the park is that Christians are standing up for themselves. There has been multiple assaults by Muslims against Christians. There has been mul multiple assaults by Muslims against Christians in this park. And no one can stand by and allow a woman to be punched. Of course not. But you didn't do I anything. Was, I wasn't there. If I was there, I would have jumped there myself and got punched first. That's my morality. It doesn't come from the Bible or Quran. But hold on, you condemned what yes. Islam teaches multiple times. Yes. So you're standing against Islam. And I asked you, fine, show me something That's... in the New Testament that you're against. I, I told you, apostasy, hellfire. Show me. Hellfire show... for apostasy. What, what does it say? What does it say? It says, if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right, so you, that hellfire awaits right, you. So you disagree with that? Yes, I disagree as with As a dogma? It. Yes. Right, but how is that a political doctrine? Well, what I'm saying is, my point was that its inclusion in the text serves a purpose from a political perspective of growing the religion, so it yes. gains more political power. Christianity is definitely not shy of being political. Of course. But there is no, there is no... The Catholic Church ran Europe for hundreds of years. Western Europe, not Eastern Europe. Didn't run Armenia. Well, Armenia is actually in Asia, about. Well, it's Euro-Asia, but let's not get into semantics. The, the, the fact of the matter is, people like you will condemn what Islam teaches, but you won't stand up against Islam. Oh, listen, brother. And all you have, all you have, all you have got to oppose Christianity. I don't stand up specifically against one, Islam. Oh, one second. But I do stand against dogmatic religion in any form. So this one, is what I'm but one you. second. Here's the I thing. I do stand against. Here's it. Here's the thing. Christianity teaches hellfire for non-believers. Yes. Islam teaches hellfire for non-believers. We've done this. We've done this. Yeah. And it also Islam teaches, teaches of... political doctrines that lead to the subjugation of Christians that lead to the murder of Christians, that lead to the that. oppression of Christians. If you don't believe me, brother, no, no, I don't dispute one that. second. If you don't believe it, just look at Armenian history and how the Armenians yes. fought the Muslims to have the right to practice their own religion. Your ancestors took up arms and fought in armies and fought well, by the way, against the Persian Empire. The Persian Empire when it was Zoroastrian. Well, what you're doing now is glorifying and violence based on your doctrine. I don't. This I condemn. Here's what I'm saying. So I you think they were wrong? You. No, no, no. They listen. should have allowed the Muslim armies to just rule over them. No, no, no. Listen. So at were the they wrong? Of, no. At the end of the oh, day. So you're, you're supporting them now? No. What I'm saying is sometimes in politics, war is a consequence of that. So what I'm asking it's inevitable you, in no, some I'm cases. asking you a simple question. I'm saying I condemn violence of all kinds. Were the Armenians you're glorifying the violence? Were the Armenians you're saying they fought so well? You're glorifying the were violence. Were the Armenians we should condemn all violence? Were the we don't Armenians want violence between Christians, Muslims, Hindus? We don't want any violence. I'll ask you again. Were the Armenians right to fight against the Muslims to save their land from oppression? 
I mean, I think we're stepping backwards into our last conversation. I want you to answer that question. I can't answer that Why question. Why not? Because I don't have the necessary knowledge and context no, to do so. No, so I'll tell you what you lack. You lack the necessary morality. No, it's not true, brother. It's not true. Because there it's is such true. a thing as... There what is I'm such a thing as... I condemn violence. This you... is my morality. I don't lack any morality. What are you saying that I lack morality? So you're a pacifist? Yes. So you would never use violence? I mean, if we look at pacifism as a political tool, like we've been so fond of in this discussion, it's very effective. No, I'm look not asking you that. I'm asking you, would yes, you ever use I, violence? I, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm human. I'm subject to human emotions. I try not to be a slave to them. Me too. Sometimes they get the better of me. I'm not saying that I'm above committing violence. You're still not answering my question. My ideal is pacifism and what? I strive towards that. Okay, so you're saying that you would use violence. When did I say that? Do a thought experiment with me. Let's imagine, I don't know where your mum lives. Like She's dead. All right, God, bless, God rest us all. Thank you. Let's use someone else. Someone that you love, right? You go back to them. I mean, this is a person you really love. Let's use my dad. Okay, let's use your dad. So you go back home, wherever home is. Yeah. You walk in and you find two people beating the shit out of your dad. What do you do? I will be compelled to action. Well, well, what does that mean? I will try my best to stop them. What does that mean? If my means, I would try my best to stop them with minimum force required. So you would use force? It will, if necessary, yes, yes, brother. Like I said, I'm a human and this is simply an ideal that I strive towards. So you would use force? Yes. So force, under certain circumstances, can be justified? Of course. Right. So let's go back to the Armenian but armies. It's all perspective Let's here. go back to the Armenian armies. Listen, brother. Let's go back to the Armenian armies. Were they justified in fighting the Islamist armies that were trying to conquer Armenia? Possibly. I wasn't Possibly. there. I don't have the context. I don't have the knowledge if they um, were justified or under not. Under what justification do the Islamists... Are you talking about the Ottoman Empire, the Ottoman subjugation about, of the Christian talking, population in the empire? Talking about the Safavid. Uh, Sa 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 uh, I'm, my brain scrambled. Just, just ask me the, answer me this question. One, what justification do Muslims have to invade lands that aren't their own? None. So when they invade lands that aren't their but own, are those, are, are those Christian armies justified in fighting them? Of course, brother. So there we go. Right. But listen, has, have, have people not crusaded under the, under the bearing of the cross? Yes. Of course they have. Sorry, did you just... Many lands, of, many lands of, have been invaded in the name of Christianity One also. second, one second. I condemn that as well. One second. The Crusades, do you even know anything about the Crusades? A little bit. Do you know that the Armenians sided with the Crusaders? Well, I'm sure they did. Do you know why they sided with the Crusaders? Well, I... Political, economic reasons, probably, yeah. and also to do with the church. But it was because the Christians were liberating Christian lands. That's fair enough. Did you know that? Brother, what I'm saying Did is... you know that? No. Well, now you do. Thank you. See, the thing Thank is, you. bro, the thing is you pull out these quips to try and argue a position I'm... which is not based on any knowledge of history or fact. No, but I'm not trying... That's what I said. You're the scholar here. I'm going to defer to you in that, in that manner. What I'm talking about is basic morality. I'm saying that, yes, there is divisive and and, um, and there is divisive and discriminatory um, verses in the Quran. There is also in the Bible. There is also wonderful um, wonderful morality there as well. So what I'm saying is, let's step away from the realistic, the the factual interpretation of these documents and look at them for what they are: books written by humans for political purposes. Do you accept that a Christian can't do that? No, I don't accept that. I think there's many Christians that, that take a more metaphorical um, perception of the Bible. What, what you are essentially saying is Christians become atheists. What I'm saying That's is... That's what you're saying, isn't listen, it? Listen, I know you like to give out books and once again we've had a great conversation, so let me I, give I, you one. Have you read, have you read the, book, the book I gave you? No, I gave it to my friend, I told you. Because I'm not a Christian, brother. I'm not a Christian. Bro, you hurt but my listen, feelings. This book right here is very near and dear to my heart and I'm only giving it to you because I've got a second copy of it. Now, basically, fundamentally, it's a book about yoga and the spiritual practices behind it. Okay. But in, in essence, it's also about meditation and it's also about the what ties religions together rather than what divides them. And it would please me to no end if you would take this book that has greatly influenced my life, read it to its completion, it was written in the 1800s, so the language is a bit meandering here and there, but it's a very good read. If you would read it, and we can have a discussion next time. Yes, let's do that. Let's swap. Let's swap. Right, I'm cool. giving you this book. All right, cool. If you don't want me to give that book away, don't give this book away. Should we swap back? We'll swap back when we're finished, yeah? So you're not going to read it? I said we'll swap back when Are we're finished. Are you going to read it? I'll read it. Will you? I'll give you my word, I'll read this okay. book. Okay. Cool. I'll read your book, you read my book, and then let's come back and have a conversation. Right. Because what I'm, what, what I'm saying to you is, bro, 
If you, you have a, a moral duty to stand on the truth. That's where you have to stand. You I have agree, to stand I agree on the with truth. that. I agree with that. And, and the truth can be known through many different methods. And I would challenge you to engage with Christ's teaching and to find me a problem with what Jesus taught. If you can't, then you have to stand with Jesus against Muhammad because I can find problems with Muhammad's teachings as I've demonstrated to you today. Okay. Yeah? I've already gone through my own spiritual journey and come to the rejection of all scriptural doctrines. What, what that book teaches you is not to believe anything. When we hold a belief... Wait, do you believe that? I mean, at the end of the day, we hold functional beliefs such as the sun is going to rise tomorrow. We don't necessarily know if that's true. We do you, base, do you, it, on, do you we base believe, it on prior evidence. Is it, do but you believe I'm it is a truth that we shouldn't believe in doctrines? I, no. So, it's a fact so, we shouldn't believe in doctrines. Right, it's, it's a, a fact. fact. So that's the truth. It's self-evident. It's self-evident that we shouldn't so. believe in truth. I just use the word believe. It's very hard not to because it's part of the vernacular. So, so but the, when I use it, I don't mean it in that term. So the, so, so the point is, bro, your, your own position is self-contradictory. You're saying that it is a doctrine, a belief, that we should not believe in doctrines and beliefs. You're saying that it's a truth that we shouldn't believe in doctrines which describe truth. And that's a doctrine. So you, you've got a self-contradictory position. Well, That's I, not the truth, bro. If something contradicts itself, it ain't true. Listen, my, from my experience, division comes from, from firm, dogmatic beliefs. If you believe one thing so firmly that you're not willing to change your mind, this will cause a conflict with another but person. But you're saying peace is so the filter by hold, which we choose doctrine. I do, hold, I do hold beliefs, you're right. There we but go. But my beliefs aren't so firm that I couldn't change them tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that it will, I would be hard pressed to make you reject Christianity no matter what I showed you. Even if I showed you a mathematical equation that said Jesus Christ didn't exist, God doesn't exist, you would probably say, you know what? I don't believe that, I'm that. going with the Bible. He so, tried that, it <laughs> failed. He tried that, it failed. So my point is this, is that... Wait, wait, wait can I just reply to that? Go ahead. Because what you're saying is that the filter of truth is that which allows us to get along. But well, I'm I saying think, to I you... there can be no higher I'm saying ideal to you, than this. I am saying to you, I, I know there is a better ideal. It's called love. That's what I'm talking about. But man. love is partisan. Okay. Well, love takes sides. I just remembered. Wait one, one second. Let go me go finish ahead. my point. Go ahead, go because ahead. your filter of truth yeah. is, is harmful to society. Okay. Your filter of truth so. masks injustice. You your that? filter of truth permits cancerous ideologies to spread their tentacles in society. So. Your filter I'm of truth. I'm talking about the re rejection your, of dogma. How but, but is you're, that allowing dogma to creep into the society? Because yours is a dogma. Listen, I saw you. What, what? I, saw, I, saw, I saw one of your videos today yeah. as I was doing some prep for coming to Speaker's Corner and you used an analogy of three glasses of water for the Trinity. Yeah. You said that if we take a bottle of water and we take three glasses there, we fill the glasses with the, with the water in the bottle, then is it still one drink or is it three drinks now? Because it's been separated into three. Yeah. We can say it's both one and three simultaneously. In yeah. a sense it's one, in a sense it's three. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is I just go one step further than that. If there's, we're all glasses of water, there is only the water, that's it. And, and we all have simply manifested as a small encapsulation of such. Right, so but let me address no that point. There is no separation between, no, bro. Let, let, let me between address that point. my life and your life. There is just life. Let me address and that once point. Once we realize this, there let me, is no let, need let, let for me address any that dogmatic point. religion let, 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 let to tell us about that morality. Point. Let me address that point. Because his idea is that we all have some of the truth. But you're comparing water with poison. You're comparing something that nourishes and gives life with something that takes life away. What are you talking you're, about? You're talking about the, no, not all religion. Le, no, 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 I didn't inter Why do you always interrupt? You're trying to clarify my no, point. No, one Let second. Me help you. One second. Your claim that all religions are in some essence a, a capturing of the truth and that the truth is life is just a rhetoric because there are different ways of living life. Of course. Right, but some of, one second, it, how many some of, is one how second. <laughs> I will raise my voice if you force me to. So, the point is that some ways of living life are poisonous and dangerous to life itself. Islam is one of those ways. Liberalism is one of those ways. Hinduism is one of those ways. Yoga is a form of Hinduism. This idea that we're all part of some great consciousness is simply linguistic nonsense this is because we all live differently
and we live life differently. Of course we do. So life is not the same. No, no, no. We have an illusion of individuality. It's like if I blow a soap bubble, if we both have a pot of soap here and we blow bubbles like we're kids, I'll blow a bubble and you'll blow a bubble. This will be my bubble, that will be your bubble. But if we pop them, inside is just air. So the air is not my air and your air, it's simply air. So this is what I'm saying to you, in the same nature life exists as life. We exist as an encapsulation as that. I'm just taking your three glasses of water analogy to the next step. I'm saying we're all glasses of water. So let me, re let me reply to this because you're, what, what you're doing is you're positing a self-contradiction. You're trying to say that all truth is the same. And ultimately truth that all religion. Yes, exactly. Allow me to finish just a sentence without interruption. You're trying to claim that all true, all religions are, are really about the same thing. And they're not. They're not about the same thing. They don't teach the same thing. They don't have the same values. You're having a self-contradiction because you're trying to say that we shouldn't adhere to dogmatics or beliefs, but you're adhering to dogmatics and beliefs. And you're saying that we should um, shouldn't uh, uh, uphold dogmatics and beliefs because they cause conflict. But your own beliefs cause conflict. So I invite you to let go of them because I disagree with your dogmatic beliefs. He's telling me that a belief in unity creates conflict. Unity on what? Unity on the fact that we're all alive. We're all, we're all alive. But we don't all live life the same way. We don't live life the same way, but at the end of the day, what happens to one can affect why, why the should butterfly I, Why should I accept? What happens to one can affect what happens to the whole. Let's look at Hinduism. Why should I, why should I accept the practice of chucking widows onto their funeral pyres of their husbands? Listen, these things are simply different rituals that, that evolve over time to reflect cultural practices. You don't need to ad adopt that. So now you're trying to re re reinvent Hinduism? No, I'm not trying to reinvent Hinduism, brother. What I'm saying to you is there's a commonality between all religions. What is that? It is worship of God and life and brotherhood, unity. Worship of God, life, brotherhood and unity. Let's just actually dissect worship that. Worship of God, life, Brotherhood, unity as separate articles. Let, 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 brother, brother, please. Brother. I'm not arguing scripture. Brother, thank you. Just stay focused on me. Because what you're saying is, is something that when you, it's this kind of mantra, this gloss that we put over the world. Let me finish. You put these words over all the world religions as if they all mean the same by God, as if they all mean the same by worship, as if they all mean the same by brotherhood. They don't. They all fill those words with different meanings and that's why there's conflict. So you're trying to just say, let's hollow it out of all meaning and then when we've hollowed it out of all your meanings, just put in it the meaning that I give to it. One second, but I disagree with your meaning and so I must be in conflict with you because of that. So now what's your choice? I either dominate you or you resist me. What's your choice? But I mean, listen. Would you dominate me or resist me? Don't, don't try and pigeonhole me. What I'm saying is that to focus on the commonality of religion is, is what... Would, what commonality? What would... I mean, at the end of the day, you can say, you can... One second, brother, we're having a discussion. Yeah, please, we're, we're having a discussion, please. So at the end of the day, you can say that the meanings are different for, for God, for brotherhood, for whatever in these different religions. At the end of the day, the meaning comes from the interpreter. If you read it and take a different meaning from brotherhood than the Muslim does, that's down to you. Brotherhood is a concept of unity. It's Between very simple. who? It's very simple. It's a concept of experiencing. Between who? Let me explain to you. It's a concept of experiencing that which is outside of your physical body as you. Between who? Brotherhood between, between who? Between everybody. Right, but here's the problem. And this is the point you keep missing. Muslims teach that the value of my life is half that of theirs. I reject that dogma, brother. That's right. what I'm telling you. And why I'm rejecting your dogma? And I'm it's rejecting... One, one second. Always you interrupt. You can't control your heart. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You need discipline. It is, it is a bad trait of mine. I say that, but I lost discipline today. So. You, you, basically, you basically need to, to, to think about the irreconcilable contradiction that you have. The irreconcilable contradiction that you have is essentially saying, let's reject all these dogmas and doctrines, but everyone accept my dogma and doctrine. That's what you're telling me. 
You're saying reject your concept of brotherhood because you know what my concept of brotherhood is. You've, One second. You've admitted that it's part my, of that. Yes, exactly. That's you're, not so you're so you're telling me to reject my concept of brotherhood yes, it's not and all accept inclusive. and accept your concept of brotherhood, but you can't give me any good reason to. But here's a good reason why you should reject yours. The only reason here's a good reason why you should reject yours, and that reason is that your claims to truth, your doctrines contradict reality and if they contradict reality they are not true because if a equals b and b equals c then d and c equals d then d must equal a but if you come up with any kind of equation where all the former premises are true but d doesn't equal a you are contradicting yourself and your logic does not stand and that's what you're doing fair enough but, uh, sorry, you went on for too long and I lost my point. Um, well, if you interrupted less, I yeah, wouldn't have maybe. to go on for so long. <laughs> so, I'm arguing that, 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 that truth has to correspond to reality. Yeah, yeah sorry, I got it back. Here's the difference. Let, let us talk. Here's you difference. can talk afterwards if you want. Here's the difference between my dogma and your dogma. Your dogma is inelastic. That means that you can't change it. You believe concretely in the Trinity, in Christ rising after three days, these things are inherent to your dogma. If they change, the whole belief crumbles. What I'm saying to you is very fluid. It's a sense of experience. You can never accept it unless you experience it yourself. Brother, we have that experience in the church. If you, what, you, have you ever experienced the whole of the universe as being a part of your body? As Christians, we have experienced the, the divine no, no, unity. No, 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 don't do that. I'm asking you a specific question. I am answering a specific said, question. As Christians, we have experienced. I'm asking you specifically. Go on. Have you ever experienced the whole universe like it's part of your own body? So let me answer this question. We Christians are not pantheists. This experience that you are describing is not possible. It is. You cannot experience. experience Why are you interrupting? It. We Christians have a better experience. It is the experience of the Creator Himself, the one who created creation. Now, let me answer, ask you this question Which is it better to experience? I can experience the creation. I'm doing it right now. I'm experiencing it through all my senses. So I'm experiencing all the creation through my senses. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying as a Christian, we can experience the divinity the higher, itself, the creator. Now tell me, which is a better experience? Well, I'll tell you. The creation or the creator? I don't, I don't draw a distinction between the two. Is the creation infinite? Yes. Based on what evidence? I mean, there's scientific evidence to Go on. It. Which I mean, is? We can see that the, the, the universe is infinitely expanding. No. I don't know, I don't know. I'm not a scientist at the end of the day. Right, you so can easily I, trip me up like so that. I am going to. I'm going to. <laughs> so we, 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 actually, actually, there's, there's, there's a lot of problems with this claim of an infinite universe. This brother knows. It's We've already even, had this it's conversation. It's not even a point that brother, we, we need to debate No, we over. do we need to debate it. Because if the universe is not infinite, then this idea that you should, you should seek experiences mm -hmm. with a created thing mm -hmm. is self, it, it's self-evidently ridiculous. We're not, we don't believe in paganism as Christians. No, but I don't Let me finish my point. We know that the universe is not infinite. Why? Because of redshift. Do you know what redshift is? Yeah, it's when the phase of light, um, when it's going like, it's the recession when it's going velocity. so fast that a certain part of the light is yep. moving at a different it's the expansion speed. Of of, it's the expansion of the electromagnetic wavelength based upon an object moving away from you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the CRB is? Criminal background check? No, it's the it's the it's the cosmological background ra ra uh, radiation. The cosmological background radiation demonstrates because of the equality of temperature found in every point of the universe That's fine, that that universe must have one second that that universe you. must have been at one point and one time much closer than it is today. So enough. between the observation of the redshift and the observation of the cosmological background radiation, we can conclude that the universe has not always been, that it had a start. But there's also philosophical problems with the idea of infinity. But could it not be cyclical? One second. One, yeah, yeah, that's that's a possibility. But one second. Let's let's look at let's look at the idea. Let's look at the idea of, of an infinite universe. If we have an infinite universe then that means we've gone through an infinite moments of time to get to the present. 
How do we get to the present? You're going on a big tangent here. It's really not a tangent. It's totally irrelevant. No, it isn't. Point. I'm the demonstrating the day, that the universe had a beginning. At the end of the day, that's fine. I can't, I, I'm not going to argue with you on... Do you accept the, the universe had a beginning? I, I don't think so. Well, I think it, it's then cyclical. Then it is a debatable point. I think point. it's cyclical in nature. That's based what on what I evidence? Think. It's just what I think. Based on what evidence? It's just based on what Would I you think. agree that, that that's, a, that's a, just a thought then? Yeah, that's it. You're just positing a thought, you're yeah. plucking a thought out of thin air. That's it, brother. Right, but here's the point. Brother. But at the end of the day, that's all you're doing as well. We don't know the great no, existential reality. No, brother. We're all grasping at straws here. No, we're, brother. No, hold on. We are. We're you, not, have hold a book, on. you have a book that tells you X, Y, Z, anyway, but no ultimately, when it comes to existential reality, we're all grasping at straws here. Brother, brother, the fact of the matter is, science has to predicate the idea that the universe had a beginning. And it has to because what came before the beginning of the universe is beyond I, empirical I'm observation. Tell you, I don't know if it did or it didn't. And that and what, the conversation, I don't know. But, I'm agnostic about the fact. But your beliefs rest upon it. It doesn't. So why, I've, why do I'm you... I'm telling you is I've experienced something that feels infinite. You had I a caused, demonic experience, bro. You can call it that. To me, it didn't feel demonic. If it guides you away from the truth, it's demonic. It's, okay, if the truth, to me, is the oneness of all beings and all matter in, in the universe, and you're telling me that's demonic, it doesn't sound demonic to me. So my because truth is you different to your truth then, isn't it? At the end of the day, None of us have achieved the highest level of truth right now, but there is only one and one truth. So you agree there is a truth? There, of course, there must be, right? So it's incumbent upon us to stand on that truth. Yeah, but we don't Which means know that it. we have to base... We don't know it. Your arguments are from We scripture. can know it. Your arguments are from scripture. No. My arguments are from experience. No, I've used three strands of argument. You've not been paying attention. I use philosophical, empirical and revelation. You weren't paying attention. If you had paid attention, you would have realized they employed Re three forms yeah. of evidence. Revelation is... It Revelation, scripture, right? scripture yeah. science, yeah. empirical observation, saying and philosophy. No, no, no. You're saying that the universe must have a beginning. Thank you. That's fair enough, if it does or it doesn't. I'm posing that it's cyclical in nature. Even and that and it could appear to have a beginning from Brother, a scientific perspective. What I'm perspective, saying to you is, even if it was cyclical in nature, you're saying. So, do you agree that there is a but truth? I'm saying that I don't know. Ultimately. Brother, I'm agnostic try to about follow, the beginning of the universe. Try to follow a line it, of logic. Yeah, but what I'm saying to you is, I'm agnostic about the beginning, the beginning of the universe. So, try to, brother, my argument doesn't predicate try, on that. Try to follow a line of logic. If you say that there is one truth, and you accept that morality means that we have to stand on that one truth, then. This is, this is the thing, we are able to identify the truth because it corresponds to reality. If our truth claims do not correspond to reality, they are not true. But I mean, truth is self-consistent. If I said... But I mean, have you ever seen a human rise from the grave? Right, one second. So you need to make a leap of logic to accept Christianity. No, right? but the first apostles did. <laughs> It's, it's written you said, in a book 2,000 years ago that they What's saw that got to do with it? We don't know it. Are you saying we don't that know just... It was so. Sorry, are you just saying... Are you oh, there? One second, one second. I haven't been out of space, but I know that the world is round. You actually don't. I have not seen that the world is round with my own eyes, but I know that it is on the testimony of others. We pose that it's round. Now, one second. Could be triangular. Are you saying... Are you saying... It could be cuboid. Are, are, we don't actually know. No, we do know it's round. Have you seen it with your own eyes? Like we can prove said. it observably that it's round. Okay, what I'm talking about here is Cartesian doubt. If we apply Cartesian, you don't even understand Cartesian doubt. How do you what know What is that? Cartesian doubt? It's a bit rude, isn't it? I bet you you're wrong. What's Cartesian doubt? Cartesian doubt is basically the idea that we strip away all beliefs to get to that which is fundamental. So it's basically ultimate doubt. And what did he decide as a fundamental? He, he decided that it was religion, that God was the fundamental truth. No, he didn't. Who? Descartes. He said cogito ergo sum. I think therefore I am. Which means that the fundamental yeah. principle... You see, you didn't understand but Cartesian no, but doubt. But Descartes did, he was a theist and he did come to that realisation. No, but he built up to that. Yeah. I understand don't, Cartesian don't, don't, philosophy. Don't say, that's fair enough, but don't, just because I mentioned it... Just threw a term into a debate no, that you didn't I, understand. I clearly understand it. I told you it's ultimate doubt and I told you no, I know that... Oh, it isn't. In fourth meditation. Fourth meditation Descartes. That's fair enough. You're trying to acquire, you're trying to appeal to someone you don't understand. Just accept it, bro. No, I mean he's I may, read Cartes. I may not have I've a, read Cart. I may not have a deep understanding of it, but I, I understand the term. But you got it wrong, it's bro. About, it's about doubting reality to the point where you get to what is fundamental. And what did he describe as fundamental? Like you just said, cogito ergo sum. Right. I so think therefore I am. But Car but one second, right? Um, Descartes would never have argued against the observation that the world is round. 
And he never would have used his philosophy I'm, I'm to not, do so I'm either. I'm not arguing against that either. I'm just... You, did, you literally did, just a no, few minutes ago. I'm not ago. posing that the, that the globe is, is, very, is a cuboid or triangular or whatever. I'm saying it could be so, couldn't it? No, it can't. It, it really eyes. can't. I'm using that as an example to say to you that just because it's written in the Bible that, that the apostles saw Jesus rise from the grave doesn't make it so. You don't know, you weren't there, you didn't see it with your own eyes. I'm saying that it's a leap of logic to believe that because what we understand from science, humans can't rise from the grave. So you do need to make a leap of logic to believe the scripture. No, one second. Here's the, here's, right, allow me to reply. Because you're essentially saying that because witnesses gave their testimony that they had witnessed an event 2,000 years ago, that we can't say that it's true. Of course we can't. If we know well, no, let me finish. I hadn't finished. So... The problem with that is that if you take that logic, we can't know anything about antiquity or history. Because everything that we know about history, including Armenian history, is written by witnesses from antiquity. And if you're going to say, one, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, just for once, without interrupting. So we cannot, we cannot follow anything from history if we say that because it was written a long time ago, we can't know it's true. The fact of the matter is, by every historical test, we can say these things for certain. One, Jesus Christ was a real person. Two, that he went around identifying himself as the Jewish Christ. Three, that he had followers. Four, that he was crucified. Five, that after he died, those followers were convinced that he had risen from the dead. We can say those things as historical facts. So we're back to the square, we're back to the question that you need to wrestle with. No, we're not. Here's the question that you need to wrestle with. What would convince a person to believe that someone that they knew was dead was alive? Listen, eyewitness testimony is not even reliable in court on the same day that the incident happened. Yeah, it is. You're, no, it's not. Eyewitness Why do they call witnesses then? Eyewitness testimony is known to be the most unreliable uh, method of evidence in court. That's not true. why human recollection is flawed. We don't recollect events perfectly as and we that's see them. And we see that exactly in the Gospel. We, we find recollections. You need a philosophy of knowledge, basically. We, know, we can know what we experience. You're still not answering my question though. What I'm talking about it was... What, what was the it? question, what could convince people that a man they knew was dead was alive? I mean, maybe he wasn't dead in the first place. One theory. Um, doppelganger. Doppelganger, second theory, okay. Um, I don't know, that's it. Right. That's all I got. <laughs> so, listen, here's, the, here's my invitation to you. And it's my invitation to all of you as well. I will entertain seriously any hypothesis you give on one condition. That you entertain seriously the hypothesis that I give. So my hypothesis is that the reason why they believe Jesus rose from the dead yeah, is because Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. So well, let's entertain your theory, the idea that he didn't really die. Okay? I, what I'm saying to you... One second, no, I don't we... Know. I don't know what happened, and neither do you. No, we do. No, we don't. We, we do. Have eyewitness testimony from 2,000 years ago. And what's wrong with that? I'm telling you, it may not be reliable. Based on what evidence? Listen, I... We're going in circles here, I'm telling you, I don't know the exact details of what happened on that day. If Jesus rose, maybe he rose. What I'm saying is, we've never, I've never seen anybody rise from the grave, have you? No, uh, no, no, I haven't. All right then, so we must make a leap of logic here to accept the scripture. It's very simple. Brother, don't try and make it sound like it's so logical, because 2,000 years ago, some apostle said that Jesus rose, that you believe it. That's not so logical. I'm sorry, it's have you ever, have you you, ever seen you, the you formation of a planet? Saying? You also, you also reference science, so One second. Have, does science say that it's possible to reanimate life? There are scientists who are Christians, so they will believe that, yes. Well, I, I don't think that you can point to any scientific study that shows that it would be possible to reanimate a human corpse. Right, well, let, 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 me, let me just deal with that, let me just deal with that. Wait, whoa, bro, bro, bro. Bro, 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 you're appealing, you're appealing to science, bro, bro, are you talking to me or are you talking to him? Right, so talk to me then. So your, here's the problem with your argument, again, and, and, and I've seen this in you, and I mean this with the greatest respect, but what you do is you use forms of knowledge in a utilitarian fashion, but not in a consistent fashion. 
Because when I demonstrated using empirical evidence that the universe was created, you wanted to doubt the science. But then when I argued for the resurrection, you appealed to science to doubt the resurrection. I'm just, I'm so here's you the thing. To science, so let me do it. No, one second. But here's the thing. A miracle, by definition, is supernatural. Science, by definition, is the observance of the natural. So we would not expect, we would not expect to see empirical test studies of resurrections because by their definition they're miraculous. However, however, miracles are one of the most testified to experiences in humanity. I can also give you one second. Are you, did you just register what I said? Yeah. Miracles are one of the most testified to experiences. Brilliant. In so there is sufficient reason for us to believe that miracles can happen okay. because countless millions of people of all religions, of all cultures, of all periods yeah, of history, including today, all claim miracles. Okay, we're using testimony now. I can show you millions of people who can give you testimony that they close their eyes for meditation and when their eyes close, they experience the whole universe as their, as their own body. I'm telling you, for me, from my understanding, this is the highest level of morality that we can strive towards. Because if you see... An experience. You can experience it. I've experienced How is that a morality? It. Listen, because once you experience all of matter as part of yourself, you don't need morality. Because you don't... Listen, you don't need... What, do you ever see a baby chop his own finger off on purpose? You never see it because the baby knows this is my finger. I don't want to lose it. So in a similar fashion, if you were to see the whole universe as yourself, you wouldn't want to do any harm, would you? You appealed to God's law just then. Do you know that? How so? God said, love thy neighbor as thy love thyself. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. I agree with that. That is the I law. I agree with that. I that agree is with the, that. Our, the law that our scripture says God has written on I your heart. That. I accept and that. And you have that image on your heart because you are that. made in the image of God. I accept that. And this is what I'm telling you. Do you accept that you're made in the image of God? In a, in a way. In, not, yes or not, no? Not in a way that God looks like a human being. Why do you resist the truth, bro? Do you think that God looks like a human being? No, no, the image of God is about your morality. Okay. It's about your uh, I, uh, your facilities, abilities. My understanding is that God. Why do you is, fight the truth? No, it's my understanding of the truth. That's but you're, but here's the thing, I don't deny that any religion can talk about spiritual experiences. I don't deny it. Every religion can have spiritual experiences and don't deny that you had a spiritual experience. The question is not whether you can have a spiritual experience. The question is whether your spiritual experience is from God or from demons. There are demons. Well, let me finish. Let me finish. There are demons prowling the world seeking the ruin of souls. They give out false experiences to guide people into error, to guide people away from the truth. And that truth is in our Lord Jesus Christ. Fair enough, brother. I accept your belief. What I would tell you is that a spiritual, a spiritual um, path or following. Or Wait, you're resisting me. What happened to the brotherhood? You should, oh, you should get hollow out your doctrines and just accept unity with me. I do. I do right. So why argue? Too. We're not arguing here. We're just talking. That's it. But, As I said, I came here to. But learn. you're resisting what I'm saying. No, I'm telling you that. <laughs> Ah, shit, I, I lost my point. I had it on the tip of my tongue. But you're resisting my point. He's got a specific set of beliefs. You're trying to broaden it out to make it all very inclusive. But what he's trying to say is, is truth is a definite truth. Is the, the precept of modern science is there is an external object of truth. Yeah. There's a way molecules and atoms and atomic particles work invariant of who's looking at them. It's just the way it is. The Bible's not concerned with that, is it? The Bible's concerned with that. We need a better mic. Get us a handheld mic. It's, it's, Sorry. It's I, was, I was sticking up for Hatun. So it's concerned with a different type of absolute truth. But you can make a mumbo jumbo theory of subatomic physics, but it's just a mumbo jumbo theory. It's not absolute truth. It might even be self consistent mathematically, but if it's not true, it's not true. Here's, what I, here's my point to you, bro. Let's, let's just, wrap this up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. One more point. Let, let, let's wrap it up. Go on, you have your final say. I'll have my final say. My point to you was that. You just said that um, from when I was talking about unity, that you saw 
something of the scripture in it of what did you say the scripture of the Lord that is written on your heart or something so this is a commonality between religious beliefs that we can see this is what I'm trying to say to you is that we should focus on unity and please read the book and and it will give you a more broad perspective the next time we have a conversation and I'll do the same okay so here's my final statement bro my final statement to you is stop fighting the truth your heart has confirmed the truth for you the truth that you acknowledged was do unto others as you would have them do unto you and Jesus Christ upholds that law the Old Testament upholds that law the very truth that you invited me to live by I find in the Bible however I did not interrupt you oh my gosh I'm so sorry I know it's all right I forgive you yeah but, 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 but here's the thing bro Islam don't teach that shit Hinduism don't teach that shit. Christianity does. So the truth of your heart is confirming the truth of the scripture. So stop resisting the scripture, pick up a Bible, read it, and then come and talk to me. The only difference between... No, 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 we're done. Have a good day. God bless. Read that book, I'll read yours, we'll talk again. Okay. Is there anyone else who wants to talk who's been waiting? Did you want to talk? You're just going for height there. Just going for the height advantage. Wait, I can't. Oh, oh give him one and give me one. Uh, battery. Okay.